All right, let's have a look. P, 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 P. Ah, oh, Q. Oh, Queensland. Where's Qatar? Good evening, guys. Firstly, apologies for the poor lighting here in my flat, but I just have to shoot this intro for this exciting vlog that's coming your way just now. So, earlier this week on YouTube, I had a poll asking whether or not you'd like to see some old footage that I took of my visit to Doha three years ago on a stopover to South Africa. And the overwhelming response was yes. And I thought it might be actually quite a good time to post a vlog about what Doha used to look like in the past, because there's a pretty big football tournament kicking off quite literally in a few days time in Qatar or Qatar. And of course, you will see a lot of Qatar and the 2022 FIFA World Cup in the news and in newspapers. But that will show you the current picture of Qatar. What this vlog will show you is what Qatar used to look like in the build up to this global showpiece three years ago. I would love to tell you that I took this footage three years ago to eventually put on YouTube because I didn't have a YouTube channel back then. But the honest answer is no, I didn't. So the narrative in the vlog and some of the footage might not be the best. And I have to say the video quality and the sound quality is not great either. So keep that in mind when watching this vlog. So with no further ado, let's jump in a time machine. Let's go to 2019 to Doha. Let's go. There. Thank you very much. Oh, really? Our flight time will be six hours and 90 minutes after takeoff, and we shall be cruising at 25,000 feet initial. Cancer Awareness Month, let's see what they got. So, fairly standard, yeah, some uh, earplugs there. Some, uh, see, yeah, toothbrush, toothpaste, fairly standard. Yeah, eye mask. Some flight socks by the looks of it, yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, this is a bit unusual. Coco lip balm. Very interesting. bit of sleep on the plane but not much uh, not just that it's 31 degrees outside so at this this time of the morning welcome to Qatar country number 61 for me I'm here with Salim from uh, the Golden Ocean Hotel he's picking me up from the airport and then we're going to the hotel yes we're just waiting for a car yes okay yeah and I'm excited to be here thank you very much Salim welcome really feel it now, the heat here at the airport, just waiting for our car and we're going to the uh, hotel. Is a 
beautiful niche. Oh, I bet. Brilliant. The guys just arrived in Doha Centre. Already you see some street signs that look a bit unfamiliar. Walking towards the Corniche now, which is the promenade here. It's seven kilometers long. Along there, some interesting buildings and skyscrapers to see. Already here uh, on, on route, you can see some interesting architecture. Feet on the side there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I have felt better before. This is already, it's nine o'clock now, it's well into the mid 30s already. It's gonna be a scorching hot day, and I'm really tired, but. Yeah, obviously in this part of the world, I have to dress a bit more conservatively. So I've got my long sleeves, my jean, and uh, yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be quite hot. Yeah, just have to uh, have to be a bit more conservative, I guess. So, uh, but yeah, we'll see if I survive. It's a lot of interesting architecture already here. Uh, just walking towards the Corniche, and uh, yeah. See, see what's up there, but first impressions of Doha is a really nice uh, city, very organized, very clean, and yeah, so can only get better from here. You can see the Corniche Street, and it's already an intimidating traffic that greets me here. So, like I said, the Corniche, say seven kilometers long. Part of the first day of any travel is just to orientate yourself. I've got tomorrow here as well, where obviously I'll be a bit more streetwise and have a few more tricks up my sleeve in terms of the logistics and figuring out where to go. But now it's all just about exploring a bit and getting, a, getting to grips with the city. They have some very impressive street art gardening on the sides here in Qatar so you can see they take great pride of their city that's for sure some impressive gardening skills here in Doha considering that it's probably one of the sort of drier countries in the world and you can see they take great pride in their city so like I said it's actually quite clean and yeah, there's a lot of people working around in gardens and in uh, just making sure the city is clean. So yeah, they're doing a good job in that regard. Yeah, I think I'm in the right place now actually, because that, that's the Museum of Islamic Art right over there, which I know is a big tourist sign. At the back there, there you can start seeing the skyscrapers and the architectural wonders of, of Doha smiling there for me and telling me this is where we are and this will come and come us. Yeah. Impressive. It's not just the heat that's a little bit annoying, it's also the traffic. But you can see here now, I think I've got my bearings, I know where to go now. And at the back there. Like I mentioned earlier, look at the pride they take in their gardening and their green spaces. There's a few guys actually in short sleeve shirts here. Yeah, I think they've got the right idea. Maybe I just, I'm either a super tourist or the way I'd like to see it, is just show a little bit more respect to the place of Doha and the customs here. Yeah, that could get very handy. Hop on, hop off bus interesting yellow color usually the sort of sightseeing buses are the red color like you know but yeah everything's different in Doha guys there is a famous Corniche skyline many of these buildings were built in the last 20 years maybe even 10 years skyline was unrecognizably different 
many years ago. And here you can also see some of the wooden boats, which I have read were sort of the traditional fishing boats, and it sort of brings the traditional and the modern together here in Doha. Yeah, wow, guys, I can't wait to see this at night. Look at that. It's fantastic. And, uh, away from the traffic now it's, it's crazy I mean just 100 meters from here traffic is going absolutely crazy over there as you can see and then you got the peace and tranquility over here by the waterfront and the juxtaposition is something to behold funny thing about me is I've I've got a real thing for skyscrapers and for tall buildings because I I grew up in the countryside in South Africa in small towns small villages the Concrete muscle has always been something that I look for in cities that I travel to or explore. And it's always fun to look at. And I think tonight that is really going to come. come tonight. The other thing that I've picked up so far, so I've spoken to maybe seven so far in a few hours I've been here and I've not yet met a single Qatari so people I've spoken to are all from Bangladesh or Nepal, India, Sri Lanka so that tells you something in itself about the city ah yes I wasn't expecting to see it here I knew it was there and I should look for it, but that's a famous Pearl Monument over there. Go and have a closer look. That must be the biggest Pearl you've ever seen, I bet. Look at the size of that. Absolutely magnificent. I and mean, then the added bonus of having a nice tranquil water display uh, next to the traffic. It sort of cancels each other out and we're balancing each other out. Absolutely fantastic. I have to say that in weather like this, that water looks absolutely fantastic. So, I don't know what the public find is for swimming here and going skinny dipping, but yeah, may maybe I'm not going to try it this time around. Look, it's teasing me a bit more now. I think they heard me talking. Ah, very tempting. Sneaky, I knew I was taken for a ride. Look at those tourists, one bloke in his shorts. Overall, Doha, I think, is a nice place to come and visit, but the heat is just, it's just getting to me now. So I think, I think if you want to come, maybe come at a sort of cooler time of year if there is such a thing. But architecturally, it's really something special. Quite impressed with the green spaces as well and the gardening considering the climate and the challenges they must have keeping their gardens in such pristine condition and in a way the sort of traffic the madness of the traffic next to the the tranquility of the gardens and the green spaces that that makes for something interesting i think so yeah doha is a well worth a visit. An old work colleague of mine told me there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just inappropriate clothing. And hey, look at this. Yeah, not that I'm complaining. Wearing shorts, wearing short sleeve shirts. Is that disrespectful to the local cut or is that just being smart? Yeah, guys, that yellow hop on, hop off bus is looking more promising by the minute. I reckon, I reckon that's a good shout, Nimbus weather, and with these distances to cover. I think it's pretty obvious that I'm having a difficult day, sort of, with the heat and just being tired. Uh, in a way, if you want to be a world traveller, if you want to be exploring the world, you have to take the good with the bad. Um, and, in a way, that's what makes it even more special is I always tell people sometimes it's the bad times that put the smile on your face and not the good times because you remember 
how you sort of, you know, suffered through it and got through it and that sort of sense of achievement at the end. And, uh, I mean, this has just been, a, I guess, I've walked around for an hour and a half now, just getting my bearings, exploring the city or getting to grips with some of the, uh, the key tourist sites. Uh, and that's what traveling is all about on the first day, it's just making sure that you orientate yourself um, and that you sort of know where to explore later. So I think I'm going to head back to the hotel, see if I can persuade them to check me in a bit earlier. And yeah, cold shower, bit of a nap, lots of water. Bob should be my uncle. Yeah, I've seen this building from the other side, sort of walking towards coordination. Now I'm walking back to my hotel, but I wonder who that bloke is. It, it actually. It's a very impressive graffiti, is that you call that or is it something more than graffiti? But I mean, yeah, just, just a picture I'm painting here with the fountain over here as well as the trees and buildings and the traffic in the back. That sort of sums up Doha in a single shot, I think, you know. Impressive buildings, nice green spaces, mad traffic, mad rush and scorching hot weather. Yeah guys, this, this weather is really not a joke. Um, you know, I always I always give the guys in the office a bit of a stick when they, when it's sort of 22, 23 degrees. It's called the heat wave in England and people sort of start suffering and there's announcement about drinking enough water in the office or on the tube in London. And I always tell them, you know, you, you Northern Hemisphere guys, you're a bit soft, man. You should come to the South and, and, uh, and know what it's like to be 35, 40 degrees. And man, I, I'm suffering today. So I think they, um, they'll probably be enjoying this. But uh, yeah, so all the chaps, take it easy on me today. Yeah. In between all the big buildings you sometimes see religious buildings like that as well uh, and the other thing that sort of struck me is just look at the number of white cars there are white as in it won't get very hot or as hot as say your darker colors certainly a very very wise choice in this climate chance to take a bit of a breather in the shade and admire some of the buildings around here. And yeah, if you read up a little bit about Doha, like I said, in the sort of 1980s, there were nothing here, nothing of note. So if you put that in perspective, I mean, it's just, it's an incredible achievement what they've done for the city. Absolutely remarkable. Dying for a cool drink or something cold. Let's see what a Qatarian mini mart looks like. Oh yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. Some interesting fruit and veg here as well. stuff here. Ah, oh, here we go. What sort of interesting cool drinks have they got? This looks interesting. The Newt. What is that? Strawberry juice drink. Apricot pineapple. I usually trust strawberry whenever I go. Mango steam. Hang on. This looks different. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe have a test of it. Passion fruit juice drink. I think I'll definitely try some of those. The Fantas and Coke, they're everywhere. You can get Coke in the Sahara, I mean, their logistics are just so good. Awesome. Look at some Mr. Brown iced coffee. Could be interesting. Mr. Brown is an old brand. Yeah. So I've got here yeah, some Qatari drinks here. 
So one is a fruit cocktail, another is a mango, and I went a bit old school with a classic Mountain Dew. So that should quench my thirst a little bit. Yeah, looking forward to that. Just chilling at the hotel for a bit. Maybe in the evening when it gets a bit cooler I can go out again, but yeah, just looking forward to a bit of time out. Here's a travel tip for you if you ever are in a new location or you're a little bit out of your comfort zone. It's important to have a confident walk. And by that I mean walk up straight, chin up, walk like you own the place. People will get respect for you, people won't hassle you for tours or money, traffic will stop for you. It's a normal mistake to make when I still go to places, you know, the first sort of pedestrian crossing, you're always a bit reluctant. I mean, what are the sort of customs here? What are the informal rules of society? Just take control of the situation and you'll be fine. This is my hotel, the Golden Ocean, here in Doha. And I really hope that I'm going to stay nice here. Looks good. Let's see what they've got to offer. Wow. Does it look like I've earned this? I think I have. Funny story, it's not even 11 o'clock yet. I can only check in at 3, 3 o'clock. So, I am just taking a bit of time out. Chilling. It's about 5pm Doha time and I've just had a bit of a snooze. Uh, it was quite necessary snooze. I slept maybe four hours on uh, s Saturday evening, perhaps, due to the stress about the rugby. I slept maybe a couple of hours on the plane yesterday. So six hours in two days is not fantastic when you're going traveling. And um, But yeah, I guess what I just needed a, a, a nice rest. And what it, what it does mean is that I can appreciate the little things in life like a nice hot shower, which I just had, which was amazing. Why have I come to Doha? Um, Doha has always been a special place for me. It was the place that I transferred or stopped over when I left Cape Town and I went to Germany for further study. So I flew Qatar Airways and I had a, I think it was an eight hour stopover in Doha. Uh, didn't manage to obviously get out on a sort of day pass and explore the city. So uh, I always I made a mental note that I have to come back at some point to actually explore in many ways the city that opened up the world for me in uh, was my gateway to the to the world, to Europe and to the wider uh, big bad world out there. So for me it's it's got a lot of sentimental um, value in that regard. Just show you quickly what my room for the night looks like. 40 pounds a night. I booked a king suite here at the Golden Ocean Hotel. You can see nice, reasonably sort of sized lounge, and then there's the TV, teas and coffees. There's my room at the back there. Reasonably sized, nice double bed. Amazing when you've only had six hours sleep in about two days. Yeah, not much and stuff there, but it's um, it's quite nice during the daytime. But yeah, that's it. That's uh, the sort of around for my room. This is actually quite luxury for me. I don't usually stay in places like uh, you know of this size. Usually, I just I try and get a double bed nowadays rather than a dormitory. Those days are probably over. But yeah, to have a little bit of a lounge and a relaxing area, that's that's really good value for money. Yeah guys, I've got another ace up my sleeve. I've got a friend that lives in Doha. His name is Louis. I know him from Stellenbosch uh, back in the day when, when I was there. And he, I don't know how long he's been here, but I think he's, he's, he's calling himself a local now. Um, and it's just going to be nice to hear his perspectives of a place and obviously be fantastic to catch up with him. I've not seen him in a while. Just a little bit more of my hotel. So this is uh, the lobby on my side of the hotel and uh, you can see yeah really nice and clean it's obviously not five star but it does it does the job for sure and uh, yeah now going to explore 
a little bit of the nightlife in Doha. I'm here with a very special friend here, Louis from Stellenbosch. We, uh, we, when was it, 10 years ago? Yeah, so the 10 years ago. Amazing, the last time I've yes. seen this bloke, we were it's both bar barmen in Stellenbosch. Thank you very much for uh, hosting me here. In, Thanks in for coming. Yeah. And uh, yeah, really, really excited to see you and uh, thank you very much, man. appreciate it. Yeah. We are now entering the Souk Wakif market here in Doha and gonna see what it's all about. I didn't expect this, this is sort of you know, booming with activity and lots of nice little cafes and restaurants here and uh, yeah. Do you like this part of town mate? Yeah bro. Yeah? <laughs> Where's your favorite spot? Just over here, let's go. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's interesting, man. Kijk eens zo, wat er lekker stalletjes zijn. Kijk eens er water en thee en kijk je af en je interessante rieken. Goed ook wat er is. Ja. This is a beautiful traditional market. Also, uh, lots of modern coffee shops and modern gift shops. And yeah, really, really nice area to explore. Is it? Yeah, we're going to go. See you. Yeah, I don't know if you can see Just walking down here, like little alleys. This is where all the spices and all the kids' toys are. I mean, you can. Looks like you can get absolutely everything here. Yeah, it's a shame guys, there's a lot of interesting aromas and things you can't capture on the video here unfortunately, but it is absolutely, absolutely brilliant place to, to come and get some spices. Animal world, pets for sale. Wow, look at this. Yeah. Interesting to deal from As if you have a sweet tooth, this is probably one of the places to come to. Louis and I are just walking around. We're looking for a place with a nice view. Louis, yeah, it's a difficult job. But let's let's try this one. Spices are after the sort of thing. Yeah. The distillery sort, yeah? Yeah. Wonder what those are. Are they sort of uh, flats or are they just stores, facilities? Yes. It's like a part of the malls, but not all of them. Yeah, guys, more people and more guys in shorts, so. Yeah. Louis. We just explained to me that you are allowed to wear shorts here, and then I was I was just a sucker that fell for it, man. <laughs> some clubs and bars that you can't wear shorts. Somewhere. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's always good to have it, but yeah, it's not it's certainly not compulsory. Wow, and then now look, look at the skyline coming to life there now. Definitely a different experience at night. So Louis actually told me that that is part of West Bay. So, but obviously that's the view from the Corniche, you know, towards, towards that part, you know, the skyscrapers. And just look at wonderful view at night, really something special. Ideally, we're trying to get a nice spot where we have a nice view of the West Bay skyscrapers over there, but... Oh yeah, there. We, what did you say that, that building was? This building, yeah. Yes. That's a mosque. It looks pretty nice, so Doha at night I think is, is a much better experience than Doha during the day. This is uh, a lot more calm, it's a relaxed feel about the city as well, the traffic's not as mad and certainly obviously it's not as hot. Louis and I have decided to take stumps and have a bit of a breather here, we're going to have a nice meal and just show you the sort of view we've got there, so we've got the mosque at the back there and we've got the view of sort of West Bay over there. And Louis actually told me an interesting fact here that you know the living standard in Qatar is extremely high and until recently it was the 
place with the highest per capita income in the world. And I think, did you say that Macau has now overtaken them? So they second there, but you can certainly see that people enjoy a very good standard of living here in Doha. And the other thing that Louis sort of confirmed for me is that 90% yeah, of the population here are expats. So these are all people that come here right for a sort of year or two. They come and they make a bit of money and then they leave. And uh, yeah, they make um, some capital and take it back home. Make some capital, take it back home. And yeah, so remember when I said earlier that yeah, I only spoke to about eight people and I've not yet met a Qatari, but yeah, that's that's the reason. Thank you. Alright, so there's the Pearl Monument I was at earlier. You can see that illuminated at night. I just told Louis yeah, that I think as a skyline, perhaps only Shanghai, what I've seen, comes close to this. Shanghai just for the sheer size of the skyscrapers, but I think in terms of a variety of shapes and sizes, this can easily match Shanghai. What a lovely, peaceful, chilled atmosphere. Here you can see one of the, is it called the, do the Doe's, uh, Louis? The, the boats? Oh, yeah, the the Dow's. The Dow's illuminated at night as well. And like there as well, but you can see just there's the pole behind us, and there's the mosque, and back there's the markets we, we just went. So, absolutely beautiful, beautiful part of Doha. And at night, it is really nice to walk around here. We're actually going to take one of the dows here to the other side of the bay. Cheers, Louis! Nice one! Let's do it! Adventure. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Ready, set, sail. This side of us is going to West Bay. This side is West Bay. And this area here is Katara. Here is the. And this is the pool. Yeah. This this is the area known as the pool. Fantastic. Which is actually built in the ocean. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Guys, no pun intended, but this condom building is growing on me. I think it's becoming one of my favorite skyscrapers in the world. As you can really see the skyscrapers in great detail here yeah, now. Fantastic, and, and as Louis just mentioned, but the fine detail in each one of them. Fantastic. Louis being a tourist himself. <laughs> Sheraton building, Louis? I just want to say how special it is for me to see Louis after all these years in Doha. We were part of one big Stellenbosch nightclub family. We were a family, yeah, man, we were definitely. A family. And it's just insane to see him after all these years. But thanks for looking after me, mate, yeah. and for showing me the sights of your wonderful city. Thanks, yeah. Nice one. I'll say. Yeah. Come on. I'll say, <laughs> And that's the end of our time travel, guys. I hope you enjoyed this vlog of Qatar. And if you haven't done so yet, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button on this video, and also leave a comment as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Doha and Qatar. Let me know if you'll enjoy the football and who you'll be supporting as well. Thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you again soon.